Good day again, viewers. Back again on the mountain. Um, yeah, it's been the first time I've uh, made a video in a while. I've actually been busy for the last couple of weeks dealing with some family and work commitments. Stayed at my sister's place and helped her out with some schooling and stuff. But um, yeah, we're back again today. And um, take a look at this. We've had a bit of a downpour of rain over the last few weeks. And we have lots of weeds growing all under the shelter. But also the, the garden's taking off. Got some kale and that tomato plant's exploded. And um, yeah, I've got to do a lot of work on that. Put some mulch in and stuff because it's getting covered in weeds. But the plants are growing. And also I bet you can hear those cicadas, which is why I'm talking pretty loud. Hope you can um, hear it okay on the microphone. It's pretty pretty sensitive, this microphone. But those cicadas are loud, and they'll be here for a couple of weeks during the war warmer months. You're getting used to it after a while, but it's a bit distracting. Anyway, so yeah, today we are going to be putting, or well, starting work on raising these roof rafters on the shelter. I've just been going around and using the water level which is just a barrel and a hose and a stick full of water to um, make marks on the posts that are all at equal height. You can see there, just put a nail in. So yeah. So relative to relative to each other, not the ground, those marks are all of equal height using the water level. And that is going to be where we measure the length of the post. So how high how high we're going to make the roof. Um, The old man's going to be down here shortly. He's going to bring down our trellises, ladders, and we're going to determine yeah, how much we need to take off the top of the posts so they're all equal. Um, it's going to be seven or eight feet high, pretty high. And also, it's going to be six inches taller at the front, so then the water runs down the back and into a gutter, down into a small water tank that I can use on the garden. So yeah, I'll continue marking these off and then I'm going to get the chainsaw out and cut the tops off. We've got, we've got to do it at a bit of an angle, so I don't know how well that's going to go, but we'll give it a try. So yeah, let's see if we can get these roof rafters up. Let's get into it. What do you reckon? Well, if we make if we make the ceiling height like eight feet over here, yep, two point four, which is a bit high because it can let the weather in or whatever, but it'll stop the tent from cooking. Yep, because the roof is up off it. And if you do get too much weather in here, you can put a a bit of a wall down on this side at the top. Yep. No, it sounds good to me. I always wanted it a bit higher than too low. Yeah. And I reckon we make the other side 150 lower than our fall, like six inches across there. Six inches, yeah. So what was that total distance again? In height? 2.4. 2.4. 8 foot, which is a yeah. no, that sounds ceiling good. in a three bedroom house these days. Yep. Yeah. 
So we're just thinking that six inches probably won't be enough for the angle between the two walls. So we're gonna go with a foot, which will give us about 8% fall, which should be enough for the um, rainwater to run off. Eight degrees. Eight degree fall, rather. And that gives us 2.1. 2.4 over there, which is 8 foot, 2.1 over here, which is 7 foot. Yep. See how crappy broken tape measure, but it still works. If I just cut them now, and you can walk around and square me up with the saw. Yep. In both directions. Yeah, radio, right, yeah, that'll work. Be careful with chainsaws and ladders, probably the two most dangerous things you can combine together. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I got that. Oh wait, you messed up now. Should have got up Yep, have a look. I'll go down a bit to make sure I'm even with the blade. Brought the danger. Yep. That's about that height. Yeah, your end up a bit, I think. Oh, it looks pretty good. Down a little bit, your end. Yeah, just cut it. Pretty good, looks straight to me. on the whippersnipper. <laughs> it's always nice. Just spent an hour fixing that up. Oh, that looks good. I don't think it peeled too much off the back end either. <laughs> it's, um, I'll cut it about an inch low. Oh, well. Oh, no, an inch high. Yeah. No, they're 10 millimetre high. Yeah, that's alright. Just remember for the next one. Smashed our whippersnipper head. We're going to be using that later on to clean up the weeds in this area, tidy it up a little bit. Going to end up putting grass in here now, but I know that stuff's going to grow. Didn't think there was that much topsoil left from what we did with the bulldozer. Cool. Looks good.
we're going to just strap up, up the side of the uprights over the top and down, and that'll yep. hold it in place. While we both lift the other end up? Yeah. Sounds like a plan. Yep. If you were to lift that end up, push it this way. You could strap it down a bit more, nail it through. Well, I might even just put a nail to the, in the strap. Yep. Just and still be move. flexible and move, move enough to lift the other end up. Yep, right here. I'll do that then. Well, we finally got the first one up. Okay. I was just saying, we finally got the first one up. Now we just got to fix it into place. It's got to come forward a bit more. It's hanging over the back too much. It's looking pretty cool though. It's giving the, um, the shelter a, a good sense of spaciousness. Got to put metal straps on properly and put some metal spikes to it to fix it there permanently. There we have it guys, we got um, we finished tacking that first one up and then kept working for the next few hours and into the next afternoon and we finally got all three of them up and um, as you can see we've just braced them with a bit of metal strapping um, I decided that to hold them on properly we're going to be using a bit more of that soft malleable sheet metal that came on the crates that contained the large shed and I'm going to put some wide um, metal straps across each one of these joints and I think that'll be adequate in holding them up. It'll be, it'll be more than strong enough with those on. So yeah, that's pretty much the three main roof beams on. That was um, it was pretty heavy putting them up. It would have been a lot easier if we had a third person, but we got through it. Ended up just lifting one end, one end by ourselves, and then putting a strap loosely on it, as you saw before, and then um, lifting the other end up between us on ladders. Yeah, and then just re-tightening the strap on the end to hold it on. But yeah, so that'll do for this video, I think. Um, as for the next step, I'm going to be working on the sawmill again for the next few days and putting in the battens that go across the top. So there'll be five or six um, against each pair. So five going from the far side into the middle and then another five or six from the middle into the um, closer side and they'll be you know, it'll run across like a grid perpendicular to these beams and that's what we will screw down our corrugated iron to to form the roof. See I've got to cut out some dimensional timber it'll probably probably two by fours or something similar maybe with live edges depending on how much time I want to spend on the sawmill and then after that I'll be putting in a a floor as well which will be like a, a an enclosed deck 
about a foot off the ground, I think. And then the project will be done, pretty much, as far as the shelter is concerned. So yeah, that'll do for this video, and um, I'll see you guys next time.